So are you looking for the best options for smart home automation in 2024? You might be just getting started or you want to up your game. Maybe you're exploring options like Apple HomeKit, or maybe you're looking to set up a smart home hub or even one of the open source solutions like Home Assistant or OpenHub. Today, I'm going to take a look at all of the different options available to you and the pros and cons that come with each. First off, let's look at some of the simple solutions that you can try right now. Cloud-based apps and services that offer connections to tools you use every day. They can connect to your smart home devices you might already have. Some simple examples of these are If This Then That, IFTTT.com. It's a web-based solution that allows you to create connections to services like Twitter, Google Spreadsheets, and LinkedIn. Pretty much any SaaS app you can think of. And then devices, phones, fitness devices, smart home devices like lights and motion sensors. Once you've done that, you can create simple if this then that automations called applets. Now the service is free to start with and you can create a couple of applets which can run an unlimited number of times. For example, I created an applet that will turn my Hue light bulbs green every year on St. Patrick's Day. I actually set this up years ago and I forgot about it and it continues to work right to this day. If you're interested in space, Another cool option is to get a notification on your phone every time the International Space Station passes over your house. Now there's a number of these services like this. Zapier is a popular one. Microsoft includes Power Automate if you already subscribe to Office 365. There's one called ClickUp.com, Workitu.com, and many others as well. They all have different target markets, but I would suggest the simplicity of If This Then That to give them a try and get started. These services are great for simple automations, but the limitations for smart homes can quickly be seen with slowness to react. Opening a door at home will notify the web-based service, but it can take seconds or even minutes before they react, maybe turning on a light. So next up, I would look at smart home devices you may already have. Amazon Alexa, Google Nest Home Devices, or Apple HomeKit. These are probably the most well-known due to the big marketing budgets of the companies, and they're pretty well-priced. You can usually find Amazon Alexa devices starting at 20 bucks. Both Amazon and Google have built-in Zigbee. They can connect to Wi-Fi devices and the newer ones, they even have Matter built in. Discovery of devices in your network is pretty simple and they all have different works with style programs that allow manufacturers to certify their devices to work with them. Now, Apple HomeKit is built into Apple TV and HomePod speakers. It works nice too, but if you don't have devices that Apple has certified HomeKit compatible, you're pretty much out of luck. These devices are great for simple setup and of course all of them offer voice assistance and although they have apps, most interaction can be done by just talking to them. The problem with most of these devices is you're quickly gonna see the limitations. Lack of device support across manufacturers and super simplistic rule engines. But don't give up on them completely as I'm gonna come back to them in just a minute. Next up, it's gonna be dedicated purpose-built hubs for smart homes. Now, one of the best in my opinions is still SmartThings. This is a little white hub that you plug in and hide away in a cupboard somewhere. It has the brains to talk to all your devices and it has the ability to create some pretty complex automations. Now, at one point in time, it was a standalone product that treated everyone equal. But it was purchased by Samsung, and although they've made some nice improvements, it does tend to favor Samsung products, which if you have them, it makes it a great option. Now, many of these hubs have died off over the last couple of years. There's a few other alternatives left. Check out Hubitat. This was actually started when a bunch of the original SmartThings team left to start something new. There's still Homeseer. It's one that's been around for a while. Or you can even check out Instian. It went belly up but it was purchased and the guys are trying to make a go of it. Overall, these create the most stable environment, connecting devices in your home with the cloud and offering the most options baked into a consumer-based product. I should mention here, there's a number of super high-end options that are still similar, but cost is gonna be a factor. Control 4, Crestron, and other high-end systems are out there if you have an unlimited budget. Now, finally, I wanna talk about the systems that I use. These are options that move automation from a set and forget system to more of a hobby. With these, the sky's the limit. You can do simple setups or you can create super overcomplicated scenarios that can automate absolutely everything in your life. These systems are community driven, which means the main initiatives are interests of home automation enthusiasts looking to make things better rather than create products and make some money. Now on the downside, progress is only as fast as the size and what currently interests that community. 
But if you have some programming skills, it's easy to get involved or create modifications that suit you, but you don't have to. Both of the systems I'm gonna recommend integrate nicely with Google Nest, Amazon Alexa and Apple HomeKit. They allow you to actually improve the way they work as they extend the capabilities. For example, any device that works in Home Assistant can be controlled using voice on all three assistants, even if they're not certified to work with them. So while Apple HomeKit can't control my TV, I can add it to Home Assistant and then ask Siri to turn it on and off. The two main systems in this space that I would recommend are OpenHab and Home Assistant. Both of these are actually pretty simple to install. And I have videos for both if you want to give them a try. You can install them on pretty much any computer, but I would recommend a Raspberry Pi if you want a dedicated device. These start at about 50 bucks, and if you get a kit with everything you need, 120. Now, if you look at Home Assistant, they even sell a pre-built, ready-to-go device called Home Assistant Yellow. It's about 150 bucks, and it's based off a of Raspberry Pi. Both of these systems are easy to get up and running. They've come a long way over the past five years. Once, they were very difficult to work with. Now, they have user interfaces and Android or iPhone apps that are probably much better than any of the commercial options I mentioned before. The fastest growing option is Home Assistant, but with that comes some issues as it innovates. It can often break some of the things you already have set up. The slowest moving option is OpenHab, but if you're looking for something that stays pretty stable, it's a great option. Now, I've used OpenHab for many years in the past. It's great, but I like the punishment that comes along with the quick innovation. So recently I've been using Home Assistant. Now, this requires me to spend time each month trying out the new features in the monthly update and fixing anything that broke. Now, of course, if you like how it's working for you, you don't need to update every month. But at some point you're gonna need to, and you're gonna have to deal with all of those changes at once. I've also recently started playing around with OpenHab again, as it's come a long way. And it's a nice clean interface that's super stable. I tend to switch back and forth every once in a while to give each one a try. So there's a lot of information there, many options to try. If you're thinking of smart home automation, you can start slow with some simple options, or you can dive right into the deep end with open source solutions. Either way, have some fun with it, and you'll start to wonder how you ever lived without the automations. Like and subscribe if you made it this far. Hit the bell for notifications as I'm gonna release new weekly content. I hope this was useful to you, good luck, and I'll see you in the next one.